vincevo. This was eight, not seven, eight. I think that's that font is eight. Eight. This, this, this is laid out just, just the normal. This is the current year. This is our budget no, I said, right no, now. No, uh, this, the, the font, just the uh, is eight and 11. You're on ledger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm on regular size yeah. and I can tell you mine is 10. Yeah. But I also have comments. Yeah, well, it's comments. I just hit them. No, no. I don't. I don't have a copy of the agenda, care. I'm just. But well, thank you. Do you hand me that? Can I, can I scribble on this? Thank you. All right. So we're going to start at uh, two fifty-four. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the workshop agenda. Motion by Mr. Lawrence. Second by Mr. Gines. Any discussion? All in favor? That's a 6 0 vote with uh, Mr. Barrett out. All right. Uh, mayor's report? No report. Excellent. Council report? Mr. Lawrence? That's Peter Abbott. Peter Abbott's back there. He's in the back. He's approaching us now. Yes. What? Yeah, but it's not related to these expenses. I mean, I don't, I don't understand what, what you're asking about the cemetery now for. Yeah, yeah but, but the workshop is down department. I, I just didn't pick up on it. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. You can ask me a question. Yeah. Is there... There, there may be... Yeah, there may be some additional expansion of the cemetery in that area. You're welcome. Anything else, Mr. Lawrence? All right. Mr. Gines, Ms. Newman, Mr. Damming, Mr. Glavin, nope. Mr. Barrett. Nothing from me. That brings us to the public agenda. Uh, at this time, uh, we set aside up to 45 minutes for citizens' comments. You're permitted to speak for three minutes individually. Is there anybody on my left, your right, that wishes to address the council? And Ms. Ms. Uh, David. Robin David. 431 Oaklawn Place, Biloxi. Um, I would like to thank all the Biloxi administrations and all the city councils for supporting the museum over the past 35 years. Yep, we've had our doors open since March of 1986. Today, I would like to ask you to consider increasing our budget by an annual amount of $18,400. In October of 2004, our management agreement increased to 60,000, the advertising increased to 24, and camp 8,000. But seven years later, in October of 2011, the administration cut it by 20% from 92,000 to 73,600. It's been 10 years since then, and we've ex we have experienced a very few tough years. 
we are asking and we felt like it's appropriate now that we ask to have that amount reinstated if possible. The museum revenues are down 120,000 for fiscal year 2020 due to COVID. That might not sound much to your budget, but to our budget, it's a big hit. We have approximately 1.2 million in damages at the Schooner Pier complex from Hurricane Zeta and FEMA just obligated their 75%, but we have to come forward with our 25%. So we did get a Tideland grant fund allocation of 241,000, but that still leaves us approximately 59,640 short. We have had a very great see and sale summer camp with over 500 children this summer. We have one week left to go, and I think all the children and all the parents have been thrilled to death to have their kids at camp again. Uh, we are starting to book a few after hour events, but the tour bus business has not come back yet. And our future events for the next few months will be our $10,000 drawdown in September, our wooden boat show in October, and the oyster ball drop in December. We thought we might have our audit to present to y'all today, but Pilts, Williams, and LaRosa will present it to the board on next Tuesday, and we will give you copies on Wednesday uh, for you to review. And again, I would like to thank you for your consideration of approving an $18,400 annual increase. Thank y'all. Thank you, Ms. David. Anybody else on my left, your right? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. I'm David Houston. I'm the director of the Oro O'Keefe Museum, and it's my first time privilege to appear before all of you. And I would also, like Robin, like to thank you for your support and endorse the continuation of our support at last year's level as proposed. We are a museum in a growth period. Our numbers have been steadily increasing. Um, Often above pre-COVID times, we have garnered public, private grants from the federal, state, and local levels, including several sources we've never received. And one of those, a $10,000 grant from South Arts in Atlanta, was in conjunction with the Biloxi Community Coalition to create a community garden and a community art and outreach program for young people. This is the first time we've received support from South Arts. We have increased our assets over one and a half million dollars this year. Um, our art collection was previously valued at 27, and we've added one and a half million dollars to that just this year. And that gift has garnered us great attention in the national and international press. We have been above the fold in all of, uh, all of the major cultural blogs and media. And at the very heading of that, it says, Or O'Keefe Museum receives major donation. And before the story start, it says Biloxi, Mississippi. And one of our goals is to brand the museum with the city of Biloxi so that as we grow our national attention, we bring that attention to the city that helps support us where we are. Like Robin, we have summer camps. We host a lot of events. Um, just last night, we had Visit Mississippi bring 150 people in, three buses from Georgia, Alabama, as far away as South Carolina. So one of our goals, in addition to becoming a service organization to the community, is to become a major economic driver for the Gulf Coast and the city of Biloxi. There's more to come. Um, we're not a new institution, but Post-COVID, almost all museums are making a fresh start. There are a lot of challenges for cultural institutions. We've see, received great support, and your support is critical to that because all of these grants 
and private donations from five out-of-state states, all the way from California to Florida, help support staffing, programming, exhibitions, publications. But the support you provide Mr. is Goosey, critical your time is because up. it's very difficult to raise money just to keep the institution going with operating expenses. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Houston. Um, anybody else? Ms. Bush? Ms. Bush in the back. I'll get to the library next. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Kim Ross Bush. I uh, haven't been up here to see you guys in a long time. I'm back in Robin David up today, and I'm hoping that uh, two brunettes are better than one. But uh, no, seriously, um, to thank you all for the support you've always lent to the Maritime Museum. And as we come to you again today, it's, it really is just critical to uh, have you support us a little bit further uh, so that we can continue the mission that we've done. Our sea and sail camp uh, is just proof one more time how important this museum is to so many people, so many families. It's very rewarding to be down there on a Friday afternoon and see 40, 50 kids and uh, all their parents and uh, just the uh, happiness that comes out of it. And also, something that's been just phenomenal to watch is the generational transition that you've seen with parents and now their children and some grandchildren that are experiencing camp. And I just don't think we can ever let go of the sight that no matter where you look along the Gulf Coast, we are the gatekeepers of the history and heritage. And I implore you to make sure that we continue to do our job in the best and efficient manner possible. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Sarah. Good afternoon. I'm Sarah Chrysler Rusky from the Harrison County Library System. And before I talk about the budget, I just want to invite all of y'all. July 22nd is Library Snapshot Day. So I would invite you all to go to your local branch and get a snapshot. It's statewide and uh, support your library and also get a card if you don't have one. So I also like to say thank you all for your support. We have had a busy summer with summer reading, and in the last year, even with COVID, we had around 400,000 visitors to the libraries in Harrison County over that year. We had uh, combined with our in-person and the online programming, we had over 88,000 people attend our programming, so we had to shift and adapt as everyone did, but we still provided very high quality services for your, your constituents and for the citizens of Biloxi and the county. So for this, this budget season, we are asking for you to reinstate the 34,000 that was cut from our materials budget last year, which was a big blow for the Biloxi libraries for purchasing books and, and, and things like that. And we're also asking for a modest increase of $16,000 to help us increase salaries for our lowest paid staff members and a couple of other targeted skilled positions. We haven't had a general raise in over five years and out of our 25 Biloxi staff, 15 make under $10 an hour and 20 make under $12 an hour. So we'd really like to help bring those salaries up so we can retain staff. We've had a lot of turnover and it's important to have good quality staff to provide the services we do. We are the community source for early literacy education and of course books for families to make sure their children get off on the right track. You may have seen research that shows that children who come from families where the parents and caregivers speak and read to them regularly have exposure to over 30 million more words than families who don't do that. So we feel like our mission of providing resources to those families and um, especially the early literacy resources is crucial to the success of Biloxi and the greater community in Harrison County. We also do a lot helping people better themselves by providing computer and Wi-Fi access and not just the hardware, right? It's also our staff who help them 
How do you make a capital letter on a keyboard? How do you send an email attachment? How do I find this job application? How do I download the software to do my, my class um, online? So we do a lot of, fill in a lot of gaps that you, you may not always think of besides our, our major brand, which is books, of course. So we hope you'll support continuing quality services. And if I can, with I know I'm over my time, but I have a little happy for everyone. If you want to support your library, I've gotten some buttons. So may I approach the council and hand them out? Requester may approach. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Flip the table. Right, is there anybody else on my left? You're right. OK. Did you want to? Speak. I'll go ahead. <laughs> Kay Miller, uh, uh, the Biloxi Main Street Executive Director. Um, I again just want to thank everybody for uh, all the support we have received through the years for Biloxi Main Street. And um, our mission statement is to be the primary objective to the catalyst in promoting, preserving, revitalizing, and enhancing the economic growth of the downtown Biloxi area, and I hope everyone has really seen the benefits from that lately. All the lighting, the murals, the sculptures. Um, we have just recently um, redone benches and trash receptacles uh, for the downtown. Some of our trash receptacles cannot be repaired, so we're going to have to purchase some new ones. We do this out of our own budget where we fundraise money from to be able to enhance the downtown area. Um, and that what we do, that the, all of the public can reap these benefits. It's for the public. It's to make downtown better, uh, to bring more people to downtown so that all the businesses also uh, can uh, engage in this success and, and see more profit, more taxes for the city. So we hope to be able to continue. We have many, uh, several more murals in the works. We have some sculptures in the works and more lighting. So um, thank you so much for your support and bringing, and we also have a management agreement with the city that we were supposed to be getting money annually and that was cut back at Katrina. So we very much appreciate uh, our budget being restored so that we can continue all these great things for downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else on my left, your right? That looks to be about it then. All right, that brings us to the public, excuse me, to the policy agenda. And uh, subject to this, this meeting is to discuss non-departmentals and insurance. Did you want to cover insurance first? Yeah. It's fine with us. It's proper. One is our unit, umbrella insurance, really, for property liability and so forth, which you were showing a $300,000 increase. That's based on what we're paying to this year. I met with our adjusters just this week, and amazingly, um, I had a boss, I think I've told you this before, I had a boss one time that referred to the su success of the business had to do with the absence of badness. Well, the absence of badness trans, uh, really means that things like workers' comp and, and property and so forth, that, that we're not making mistakes. And our numbers are incredible. Our workers' comp claims are way down. Our liability claims are way down. We have no great big claims since, I don't know, five, five years back almost. I mean, so all of the news is good, but the insurance is still going up, and it's mostly driven by property insurance. So the number that you see is the number that Diana has, has essentially taken our year to date and, and yes, yeah. forced, that, forced that into the next budget year. Right. So, there's, so there's an in increase of roughly 300,000 in the property insurance, right? right? Yeah. That's our best guess right now based on performance this year of what our insurance is gonna cost us. And the only things that we can do about it are on property insurance, we could not insure some more buildings. We've already taken a number of smaller buildings off the insurance, or, or we can increase our, our deductible. deductible, which is a mistake that Gulfport made last year before Zeta, and that lived to feel the result of not, not having any insurance coverage at all. 
So that's our dilemma, it, and we don't know how we're going to get it. How, I, we honestly don't know any way that we're going to get that below the three point two million dollars total. And that's again, that's for the liability insurance, is for the property insurance, is for um, workers' comp insurance are the three main elements. And then the uh, the second category is our medical insurance, and I've ca I've given each of you, I've emailed it to you, and I've given it to you just today. That, a snapshot of where we were at the end of the third quarter and where we project we're going to be at the end of the year, and it's not pretty. Any questions on the property insurance, and then we'll touch on the, the medical or health insurance. Mr. Lawrence. Two things. We have a meeting tomorrow on the medical, and we need to get all the reports you just received from the property, so we can bring that to our committee. That'd be me, Paul, and Kenny. So I'd like to look at that, too. Just have all that together so we can look at it. And we meet with, uh, with the name Frank. Uh, I mean, tomorrow we'll meet on the property. We'll right. meet with Cy tomorrow. Well, I think we need to do that with Frank, too. Just get all the information and we'll look at all that. In my understanding, your, your meeting tomorrow is uh, just the subject medical. of medical insurance, right. right? It is. I mean, we have to add the information to meet with the next one. So, what, what we'd ask, I think, is that, that your insurance subcommittee come back at the next workshop and give us your recommendations of what you think we ought to do about our medical insurance. See, that's why you just say, oh, you figured it out pretty quick, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we'll have, I don't know if we'll have it for the next budget workshop, but certainly within two weeks, I think we'd, we'd have a better feel for that. I would just like to make the uh, observation. I, I know, Mike, that you get a, uh, the, the, health insurance I, I call it a dashboard it's just a little spreadsheet and we get that from side to time to time and uh i'm happy if if any council members want this i put it together been tracking this for a while and it seems that the um the per member per month cost uh, generally is running right now for this fiscal year year to date at about almost 400 dollars per member per month as not employees, but as family members, everybody. And and right now we're a little over a million dollars underwater, a million dollars, almost 50,000, million 50,000 roughly. And we still have uh, a few months to go. And just eyeballing this roughly, uh, for, for us to break even, we need that per member per month figure to be about $330 per member per month. If, if we do that, then we don't have to keep dipping into the general fund at the end of the fiscal year if we're still underwater, well, as we are right now with the claims. Mayor, do you have a? Yeah, no, I'm a comment to, you know, everything needs to be computed and pro projected. I think, you know, we're heavily self-insured. We had some experiences that are hundreds of thousand dollars, you know, a couple of experiences, you know, two experiences, as a matter of fact, that put us in that situation. It may happen again. So there's some planning going on and some projecting going on. Uh, but there are some options we can, you know, explore. Just like in any one of these things, there are questions, and this was the opening round of, of this, but uh, it's a heavy hitter. No question about that. I mean, we're, we're self-insured for, you know, uh, you know, by choice, okay? And uh, there are some things we can explore uh, if, if the million is, is going to be uh, something we don't want to do again. Uh, you know, but, you know, if, if we have five good years and one bad year, it sort of kind of looks at the cycle of life, so to speak. So uh, it may be an anomaly. It may not be. We want to take advantage of every, you know, projection and everything that we could do, I guess, in, in uh, predicting what we need to do. Yeah, well, one, one year does not make a trend. That's right. But um, on the other hand, I know that the insurance committee, we tweaked uh, the insurance a couple of years ago, and that, and that was helpful. But I know that's why uh, Mr. Glavin, Mr. Lawrence, and I, we meet with um, you know, the Bank Corps South on, on insurance with Cy. I mean, we're looking at all these options, but it's important to re remind all the employees from the mayor down to um, – the custodians, the firefighters, law enforcement, public works, recreation employees, we are the insurance company. And, and if, if we all do what we can to cut corners uh, and have access to good quality care, uh, we come out a lot better 
than uh, some folks winging it or, or not doing things in the most cost-effective manner. Uh, it, it, anyway. Yeah, now the computation, you know, it kind of let me down of a train of thought. Uh, you know, there, there's a catastrophic level. You know, they may be playing some what-if games, you know, based on, you know, whether we want to raise that or lower this or, or have some options right. to, to get you got a figure in mind as far as 330 per member. And uh, you, we can play those what-if games. That's what spreadsheets are made for. Well, and excuse me. I got too close to the microphone. I, I want to say roughly, if you want to get a number on what the, uh, what the benefits uh, cost um, the citizens of Biloxi for their employees, it's roughly, once you calculate their salary on an hourly or annual rate, Add about another 40 percent to that. Could be 38. Correct me if I'm wrong. Could be 41, but somewhere in there generally. Uh, and that that's a that's a number most folks don't see because it's it's in benefits. So, anyways, just we need to do what we can to hold the line on costs. And I know Mr. Lawrence is very passionate on this topic, and it helps to have Mr. Glavin's experience out there in in the real world where the rest of us work, but he has extensive experience with this. So. I'm still learning as we go, but they do a good job. We do have our meeting tomorrow, and hopefully within two weeks, maybe we have something we can put on the table and consider. Um, any comments or concerns at this point? I, Mr. Glavin? I, I just have one. Uh, uh, is there any relief, COVID relief, on the insurance cost if they're related to COVID, if they've driven some of these costs up to COVID no, no, because of COVID? Not to our mm -hmm. knowledge, but... but um, but as it, it certainly, we do have COVID money. And, yeah, well, they're COVID money related to lost revenue. CARES. Yeah, CARES Act is what we've already received. But there's a question that, you know, maybe this can apply. I mean, we've got an overall loss of about $9 million in lost revenue. And we will receive $11 million over the course of time. We've got 5.5. If some of that experience we can turn into applicable, we could reduce that $2 million delta your way, I mean that way. So that may be given that the real loss of 1.2 may be, you know, tempered by whatever we can do. That's a good point. Is what we, we, we'll take a look at that. Anybody? But I hadn't heard anything specific medical related municipal situation, but we'll look into that. Okay. Um. I mean, I think that is worth looking into if there's any relief or those funds can offset at least this year that we saw that jump, that spike that may have been related to COVID. It, or, there was definitely COVID costs. Everything from testing. Yep. Uh, right. Yeah, there was a, a From testing to also time off that we paid them for time off. Well, that, that, that's a rein, reinstatement of benefits that were, you yep. know, taken away because certain departments had to be there yeah. as well as the you know the, the premium pay that's definitely in the in the computation mm -hmm. so but I mean the, you know, we'll ask the specific question about what we had to uh, the only other thing I have on the property insurance perhaps if we can find a way to reduce those premiums on property by 20 grand we might be able to shift that savings, say, over to the Seafood Museum's request for that additional 20. And so we can kind of shuffle that around a little bit, perhaps. It's just, just an observation. One of the things Councilman Tisdale and I have talked about uh, on many occasions is that we have a sort of an upside down system here with compensation. Our salaries are low, but our benefits are expensive. And what, what is that doing to us? It, it means there's a lot of churn at the bottom. There's a lot of young people who, who don't really care that much about their benefits. They're really looking for a salary. So we get a lot of churn, a lot of young people that come to work for us and then leave because they go into a better salary. And a lot of older people who stay and stay and stay for the benefits. They're so important to them at the end of their life. To about twelve thousand eight hundred dollars a year. So maybe we have two programs: one for those who tiered, tiered who want the insurance light, and those who want the full insurance. That that is that is a solution that we've talked a great deal about, and I think it's worth exploring seriously 
to have um, two different tiers, one, one for catastrophic coverage that's very inexpensive for the younger people that, that are, don't want, that want, would rather have more salaries, for example, and less benefits, and one for the, the um, older folks that uh, are looking for full coverage. We have, we have, I'm not sure we can say this, the number of people that are those, we have, we have some employees that are extremely expensive. So, but as a family, we insure ourselves as a family. We insure everybody, whether they're having, whether they're 21 years old and bulletproof, or whether they're 60 years old and having a lung transplant. So, you know, we've got the full gambit and, and the family, and, and uh, some of that family is pretty expensive. But that's why we have insurance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else, Ken? That's it. Yeah, the only observation that I had was the same as Kenny. Just seeing that one, almost $1.1 million bump on the projection being over of what we were last year. Um, if we could identify somehow just a ballpark of what of that was COVID related, um, you know, yeah. I don't know if that's possible, but that's, that's really the only, the only observation or question I had. So, and, and I'm, I'm sure you're reading the graph right. And as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, each year we've we've started increasingly further in the hole. So, so that 1.1 million was really 1.3 million was really 1.1 million change over the year before because we were already 300,000 in the hole when we yeah, started. Yeah, so that's like I mean, just looking at the trend though. That's a very big jump compared to the other year, mm -hmm. 1.1 million versus 200, 100. It 200. makes you think that uh, there's a COVID impact there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can give you some information on that, Nathan. At the end of fiscal year 15, 14, 15, we finished an insurance up 380,000. The next year we finished up 260,000. The next year up 700,000. The next year up 80,000. That was 2018. At the end of fiscal year 19, we finished 850,000 in the hole. And uh, fiscal year 20, we finished eight, th and we tweaked it then, I believe. We finished 8,000 in the hole, which was pretty good. And then this year, we're about a million down at this point, and might well finish about a million two, million one, I, I, I would guess. So I think it's evident that it's COVID related. It's just uh, we don't know if what's going to happen next year. And of course, it hinges on your population and what fate befalls them as they go to work every day and things occur in their life. Mr. Lawrence, did you have a question or a comment? Just don't match. Uh, the only thing I didn't, didn't, how much did we got into the override insurance, 125%? What was it, the, the uh, catastrophic level? What is it? 125. It's 125 person and then it's 150 aggregate. How much? 150,000 aggregate. It's, one, it's 125 a person, and then we have 150,000 aggregate. And we used it's all of that? Profit cover. That's what you're saying? We used 150,000 of it? Or that's what it cost us? We're responsible for the first 125 of each individual. And then collectively, we have to have another 150. And right now, we have 13 individuals that have hit this 125. It's past that level. Mm -hmm. That's what I was wanting to know. Thank you. Any other questions? I would, we'll do it tomorrow. All right. Um, okay. I'm thinking at this point we may adjourn. Do we adjourn or recess? None departmental. Can I, can I point one more thing out on your sheet, please? Do you see the Motorola? Yes. Charge. That was a late ad. You didn't have it in the one that I emailed it to you. It's on you, the paper, the paper there. That that's a shift from IT for some uh, PD and fire department yeah. hardware and software and fixed ongoing support for ten years. I believe is it ten years? Yeah. So that's the first payment, and uh, that, will, that will wash out with the de decrease in the IT budget right. or the, the uh, so, software that is replacing. <clears throat> it's just the it'll be in the non-department as opposed to in the uh, IT, IT, IT budget. Okay, I think I think did everybody see that, Mr. Lawrence. Yeah, I would, uh, since we're gonna look at the non-departmental, that's what we're looking at now. 
I agree with uh, Robin and Ken. I think we should have, all we need to do is increase it back to what it was original. You're not adding any money to it. It's 18.4 more back to the 92,000. That's what it was in the original contract. That's all they're asking for, not an increase. Nobody's salaries or nothing. Shouldn't put the 18.4 back into the, their original budget, which was 92,000 instead of 736. That was the original, so I'm asking that we put that in effect. All right, so as I'm, as I'm looking at the spreadsheet that Mr. Leonard gave us, the uh, one, two, three, the fourth item from the top, it says seafood museum repair and maintenance. In this fiscal year, the revised budget for that is $58,295. What's proposed is going back to the original contract is, is $20,000, which would be a reduction from last year of 38,000. If I understand you correct, Mr. Lawrence, you want to add 28,000 of that no, no. back right there? No, no, 18 going back to the 92, just add 18, what, what, four. So 73.6, the original contract was 92,000 for the total amount for the All right, that, Okay, so look, let's look at- Wait, wait a minute, Paul, that 38,000 was what they paid off the statue with. That's why that's not in there again. That was for the Golden Fisherman, and that was paid. So that's why that's, okay. that was a one-time thing. Okay, that, I'm just, I'm trying to find it on the spreadsheet, so we're all looking at the same thing, so. It's, no, it's no. Say again. It's in the middle section. It's in. That's right. It's in the middle section that says seafood museum management agreement. It's listed at seventy three six, and right now we're looking at uh, providing the same seventy three six for next year. But Mr. Lawrence is saying add another eighteen six. Mr. Lawrence 18, is four, re requesting me. that we consider another eighteen six. And what we're doing is... I, I, I've got five people telling me things to do. Well, let's go ahead, Mr. Lawrence. 18 what? 18-4. 18-4. Goes back to the original contract we had to a museum several years ago. Right, and that's the figure right. that Ms. Uh, David was referring to earlier when she spoke. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so that's all right. Um, but, yeah, let, let me have some comments on this. This is a draft for your consideration. I don't want to make any moves uh, one place or the other without the whole package. I don't, I'm not opposed to that. I've got some questions. Uh, this is for feedback. In my case, this is what we proposed based on con ground conditions from last year and where we project this year. So there are some questions I have in, in, in every case, especially when some of these non-departmental, some of these folks have kind of made a case already. I've got questions that I would like to interact before we go. Uh, you know, across the board, take some action. So I would ask, you know, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not opposed to, to, to that once we some, some questions that I have, uh, right. you know, some basis for that I can stand behind. My, think, my thinking today is that we're discussing this and trying to get input from the folks here who, who have made requests. That's right. That we, we can talk about, if nothing else, put them in right now. Nobody's making a firm decision today that it's right. going to be in the budget because when we come back together after looking at all these other departments and all these other considerations and we've got to make everything work and pull it in to, to the best information we have at that time to make a good decision. So, and, and I, I said that for the benefit of those in the audience as well. We add numbers, three weeks from now we may add more to that, we may cut some of that, but that's why we have these workshops and that's why we kick these things around. But but ultimately the budget will be adopted after we've had a public budget hearing. And at that public budget hearing, I would encourage the public to be present and to comment. In past years, we rarely have comments. So it's, it's your opportunity to be heard on the budget. Okay, so I'm making a note, and I'm sure the administration is, that in the middle of that spreadsheet, we had Seafood Museum Management Agreement. It's pegged at 736 at the moment, we're, we're looking, as Mr. Lawrence has requested, that that be increased by 18400 So everybody's got that, there, that in their notes. I'm assuming we're going to get an updated spreadsheet from the administration in the next few days after this council meeting. OK? All right. Anything else? No, that was it. The, uh, the only. I have one unread. Go ahead, Mr. Gaines. I'm sorry. Um, um, 
we're closing down the Mercy Cross facility. Um, and that will cut out recreational activities on, on the east side of Alexi. So I'm gonna recommend that we possibly uh, do an increase, well, uh, add in the Croc Center with uh, $20,000 worth of grants. That, now we've done that once before, but we also had someone who covered that grant for us. Yeah, I think so, that's Mississippi Power. Right, right. so we may have that opportunity again, but I would at least like to consider uh, putting it in the budget um, just in case. Let me let me say this about that. You know about things in general. You know we're we're all on a pretty good roll with regard to uh, where we're going to wind up. And and you know if we're if it goes along, and we maybe for Mississippi Power decides to do that again. And that's the kind of opportunities if the seafood or or comes up with some things that you know we may be able to adjust this, get what you need in order to operate. But you know the whole idea is to to drive you know, your visitation, to drive you know, the quality of product. And that's what, you know, the other grants that could be coming in that would kind of, it's a perfect example of what you said. Right. We were putting 20,000 in, Mississippi Power said we would take that part of it. Take and that's that the kind of opportunities off. I want to investigate to figure out what we can best. We want the product there, which is going to cost dollars to, to support whatever, you know, the uh, operation would be. So that's a perfect example. I have no issues, but I'll note that. Okay. Note it absolutely, and and so um, yeah, and and again, that's the purpose of the uh, workshop is to right um, as they say, putting the wish list. That's uh, right. To put that in, and and I know that we're uh, shutting down the Croc Center. I'm not the Croc Center, the uh, Mercy Cross facility, which uh, just the light bill alone could possibly uh, take care of that um, that 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 uh, dollars and cents. So. Just wanted to throw that in. Okay. Anything else? Uh, the other thing is, um, I know with the uh, MLK, we, we reduced it to five. We didn't use all of it. But I would like to go back to the pre-Katrina. Like they were saying, we used to have 10 grand, uh, 10,000 put in there, and just re-add that to the list. And that's the only thing that I'm throwing out there. You said you'd do that only if it's in only, Biloxi. Only if it's in Biloxi, yes. <laughs> Okay. We're not giving the money to government. Uh, anything, Ms. Newman, Mr. Deming? So you got both Mr. Glavin, of last chance. The, yeah. the only other thing that, that I would like just to make note of here uh, would be to set aside $5,000 that might or might not be used. Um, this would be for the Gulf Coast Center for Nonviolence. They had, a, I guess, a workshop or an informational presentation several weeks ago that I attended in law enforcement from several different uh, cities in the county as well as the county were there. And apparently the Biloxi Police Department uh, had a grant a number of years ago that expired, but uh, that grant covered the cost of, I guess, a, a victim's, I don't want to say counselor so much as a victim's coordinator or whatever. So uh, if you were assaulted or something, you've got to go to this police department, you've got to see this person, then you have to go file that, then you need to check with the prosecutor's office and this. This person steered the, those victims through all of that. And the idea was that all the cities in Harrison County and the county, uh, at some point they're just talking now, so maybe it gets off the ground, maybe it doesn't. but. Together, we might fund a project, uh, a position uh, to, to do that for uh, all the, the law enforcement agencies right. in the county. And like I said, this 5,000 really is a placeholder, but I'm thinking if you split that up proportionally between the other cities, maybe it's 10,000, maybe it never gets off the ground, maybe it's 11,800, but at least this would get that in there. Right and, and uh, uh, noted somewhere, and maybe as it progresses, well, like I said, it, it get, never gets off the ground, or maybe it does, and we have a better idea of what it's gonna do or not. Right, I think the, the closer we get to, to September 31, you know, between now and then, some things that you know, pop up, don't hesitate to, you know, hey, this is a list, Let's, uh, we'll refine it. And you know, ground conditions for us will be getting you know, more solid, so we'll know where we're, what we can do. There's certainly all good uh, things that, you know, you've been brought up today. Sure. So but right now we're just uh, making notes, uh, asking questions, and at some point we have to make all this work and we're still a number of weeks from that. Okay, uh, I, Mr. Lawrence. Yeah, I want to ask on uh, the CTA, why don't we have 74,000? 
bare sat den foran hende. Se, de er her. Se, de er her. Det er en lot of money increase there for them. Or they had new routes or something? What are you doing? That's, 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 what, they asked. Hang that's what they asked for, for the, to do the existing service based on what their expenses were, I guess. Right, that's, uh, I'm assuming that's what their request was? That's it. Okay, and when we were originally set this schedule up, um, non-departmentals were going to be discussed a couple of weeks from now, not today, but we re we juggled the schedule. Right. And they got, in, CTA got in touch with me and said, hey, we're not prepared this week because so-and-so is out of town. We thought it was going to be two weeks from now. So in a couple of weeks, which would be what, August 3rd, I think? August 3rd, CTA will be here to do a presentation. Didn't we cut? We'll answer any, any questions I'm sure you might have. Just didn't we cut their budget whenever um, COVID started because they weren't allowed to run their buses? Is that no, I, as, as I recall, they came to us and said, we're not asking you for anything. We've got funds um, to keep us going, uh, whatever that is. So we're only asking you to fund us at this level. It was a reduced level, but it was because of the COVID, I think, as so I that, recall. So that number. Get money. Okay, got it. Okay. So that, that's what that was about. Okay, any, yes, Mr. Lawrence. Yeah, the, they talked about main, the Main Street. Underneath the Main Street you have. The Great Economic Foundation. What's that? Twenty thousand for what? Uh, Peter. What did, what, what did y'all make up on that one? What is, what is that? The brand new one? No, it's something we used to fund it about fifty thousand when those things were uh, a part of the uh, you know the incubator and all that sort of thing. And we we Peter follow up on that. Yeah, th this this foundation. It's a five hundred one c three. It was set up in the late eighties by Tommy Monroe and a lot of Biloxi business leaders. You recall over the years, their mission statement kind of shifted over to running the incubator. And they had Mr. Steve Witt, uh, and we, we would give him 50000 a year, which would go to Mr. Witt's salary. Uh, and we, we've not funded it for a number of years. Uh, the incubator has now been sold, and we, have, we approached them earlier last year. They have their own... Uh, you know, they own part of Rebel Boat Works, they have their own income stream. But going back to the original purpose of doing things in Biloxi to support Biloxi for economic things, uh, they've reconstituted their board. Uh, Jerry Krill and I went to their board meeting last week. It's Bart Luther, the bike guy, Joe Gazzo, Geneva Doomer, uh, Bud Jones, Charlie Dellinger, it's basically the way it used to be before they got tied up into this incubator stuff. So we're going to we're going to use them for a, a lot of different issues. If there's businesses coming in to help us go out and recruit businesses, businesses want to talk to other businesses. Uh, sometimes politicians want to talk to other businesses. So we want to partner with them and make them part of the whole economic revitalization of Biloxi. So I think it's. Um, you can call it a test program or a pilot program. I, I think it's going to pay good dividends. All we do is check it out. All right. Uh, Mr. Glavin. Gotcha. Okay. Any other questions? Last call. Yeah, the the 15,000. That, was, that wasn't there before the 15,000. Harrison County saw somebody. What, what is that? The Harrison County Soil and Water Conservation Commission is somebody that we've given money to some years and not others. They've been here by this council and made a pitch about what they do. Uh, it, it's brain, it, it, it's, it's, um, so what it's, 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 not sure how to characterize it. It's, it, 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 it includes things like giving, you know, tr planting trees, um, doing, um, conservation programs. They're the people that went to Hiller Park this last year and did a big garden there. Uh, they, that, they, they do that sort of thing. Uh, if you're interested, I can invite them to pitch to the council again. We've given them, we didn't give them money last year, we gave them money the year before. Yeah, just looking back over the history, a few years we have, some years we have, and I'm 
thinking, is anybody here just dying to keep it, or can we remove this? Something we can check out. And the last question is to the library crew. They're talking about adding money there for increase the salaries. I'm not going to do that until we can take care of the employees in the city of Bluxa. So how much money they adding for increase the salaries in that, that department? Because a lot of people working in the city like to have an increase too. So whatever that calls for, mm. I'm not for that. Just want to let you know that. Let me let me uh, say something. In looking at some of the, the, the programs that are coming down, uh, especially the uh, the nine hundred million dollars that hit the city, it's part of the stuff. They're, and they're in the one point eight five that's coming for infrastructure. There was there was some mention of libraries specifically and some other grants that are that are could be coming as part of the, this other program. So you know, we want to research you know, whether it's libraries or museums. There's some sections there that we haven't totally explored. We may be able to get some supplemental that you know fill in these holes that's being requested tonight. So there, uh, Peter, especially the the, the five point five may some of that may qualify for that. So let me you know let me do some research when it comes to that. But there's very specific, you know, at MML in in the documentation that was pushed down specifically libraries and museums. Now I don't know whether they've researched it or not. Yeah, you know, not just, not speaking just libraries, but everybody. I mean. There's a very you know, specific section that you know, we haven't had the opportunity to do it, but we will. So some of those requests are what we'll try and do if that, if that comes this way. But you know, uh, I just, it just rang a bell on me, and we will we'll do that between now and the next time we get there. One more footnote. Probably the biggest bang for the buck in this whole sheet that in front of you is a motor vehicle for hire commission. We're talking about instead of herding cats, they're really herding Hondas, I guess. But it's it's a uh, it's a, a tremendous service for for the city, and um, you, you can see they're actually asking for less money this year, even though they've got more cabs. They're here if you. That would be Mr. Ken Payne, who does an excellent job. We've not heard from true. folks over that way in about three years. He does an excellent job. He and his board. Uh, and that's proportional what we're charged based on the three problem. cities. The three cities participate: Oscalport and uh, D'Iberville. Okay. Thank you, Ken, for the job you do. <laughs> well, I right. got the best thirty-three thousand dollars we spent after three years on wall with our cab companies. So that's definitely the best thing we ever done. <laughs> that was every meeting. All right. Is there anything else we need to cover? If not, I'm fixing to hit the gavel. Okay. We are going to recess. So, so I got. Second. I got three. Can't Center for Nonviolence. I'm. Our next. Uh, all right. Uh, all in favor? I think that's a 7 0 vote, so we're in recess. Our next um, budget workshop will follow our next council meeting, which is Tuesday, next Tuesday, the 27th at 1 30. Thank you all for coming. Need a motion? Who made that motion? George? Who made the second? Felix? And it was a 7-0 vote.